Hey guys, the Jungle Explorer here, and today I'm going to be showing you a very sweet rifle here, okay? This here is the Diana RWS Model 36, okay? I have owned this gun for 33 years, all right? Now, this is an air rifle in the .177 caliber. I bought this brand new out of a mail order magazine in 1989, but actually it was built and manufactured in West Germany in 1987. So this baby is 35 years old and has 33 years of use. And yes, it's got a few knocks and nicks here, but buddy, it is 100% all original from the store. I haven't changed one single thing out on this. Everything, all the internals and everything, is all original and today I'm going to show you how it works after 33 years of use um, and I have put oh my gosh I don't even there's no way to calculate how many tens of thousands of pellets that I've shot with this thing and it still works okay so let me just show it to you here I mean yeah it's got a few nicks and it has I have used this thing a lot uh, I've used it for for survival for survival hunting uh, for plinking um, just everything you can think of I have used this little gun for and it has never failed me one time uh, I love the sighting system on it right here I mean it's got it's all solid steel this don't move unlike the modern uh, true glow sights that come on in your lot of your brake barrels this thing has a target sight really fine sight boy you can just literally stack the pellets with this gun if you know how to shoot it all solid steel beautiful hardwood stock yes i need to kind of scuff it out a little bit but i mean i this thing baby has been used if it didn't have any scratches on it you wouldn't believe that i had used it for 33 years but i have um i've mounted some scopes and stuff on it and you can see that i've damaged it here because that is the one thing this scope this gun does not like is a scope it has broken so many scopes I mean, probably I don't know how many scopes it's broken, and uh, the existing railing doesn't hold them very well. Now, modern guns, they figured out better ways to put scopes on them and stuff, but in back in those days, it was not real common for scopes to go on uh, pellet rifles. And, you know, when I bought this baby back in 1989, you couldn't just walk down to Walmart or Academy or, or Kmart and buy one of an uh, uh, air rifle in this class. You had to order them special. Now take a guess. How much do you think in 1989, three, 33 years ago, that I would have paid for something like this? What do you think? 100 bucks? $50? No. Try. $300, buddy. $300 is what I paid. Actually, 198 I mean, $298 is what I paid in 1989. That's like, I don't know the inflation calculation. Somebody out there probably could figure it out. But I'm thinking that's going to be something like $600 today. Um, I would still pay that for this gun. This gun has never failed me once and has just been a nail puncher and a wonderful weapon to use for every kind of thing since then. So today I'm going to run it across a chronograph and show you how it still functions after 33 years of use. Why am I doing this? Well, hey guess what you might be in a pawn shop somewhere and you might see a model 36 and say oh, i'm not buying that piece of junk old rifle <laughs> well buddy if you don't you need to walk outside and ask somebody to slap you in the face okay because if you can get your hands on a model 36 rws air rifle okay go ahead and do it because it will last you the rest of your life and like me you're going to pass it on to your grandchildren possibly your great grandchildren okay this is one weapon you don't want to walk by if you have a chance to get one, grab it, okay? So let's go ahead and jump right into the testing. All right, for this test, I'm gonna be using the JBS Diablo Exact Pellets. Um, this it, this gun will shoot any pellet good. Before they, I even learned about JBS, all I ever used was the Gamo Hunters. And these are pretty much garbage pellets and I can pretty much stack them right on one top of one of each other. Uh, but uh, this is actually a much higher quality pellet right here, which is the uh, JBS Exact, and uh, I've used this for a lot of different things. So um, this is what it's sighted in with, and I'm going to run a few pellets over the crony, and then I'll go ahead and shoot the target for you to see how good this thing shoots, and then we'll talk about some other things. So let me go ahead and turn the crony on here. 
Well, I'll tell you what, after 33 years, this thing still cocks like butter. Lot, very smooth. Let's see what we got over here over the crony. 737, 773, sorry. Little less distic there. <laughs> Let's give it another one. Seven eighty four. Seven seventy. Seven seventy. Seventy seventy two. Well, the first, it hadn't been shot for a while, so the first couple shots were kind of variable, but you see those last three shots were just right there, right at 770. Now, so that don't seem like a huge amount of velocity right there, but uh, that gives it about 11.1 uh, FPE, or foot-pounds of energy, muzzle energy there, which would make this gun legal in pretty much all European countries and Canada, which is where it was built, where they have a maximum of a 12 FPE um, rating for air rifles, uh, for, for people to legally own real rifles. Um, and you're like, well, man, you couldn't do anything with that. Well, let me just tell you something. <laughs> I've killed a coyote with this gun. Okay. You're like, no way. Absolutely. Uh, I shot a coyote. And if you'll look right up in the top right hand corner, I'm going to throw a link to an actual video of the coyote that I killed, which was just a random thing that was caught by chance. Um, I was creating a pigeon hutch. And I had some predators attacking it, so I set some trail cameras up to video what was attacking it. Um, and I was walking down there with my air rifle to check on the pigeons, and there was a coyote um, attacking the pigeon hut. And since he was pretty interested in attacking, he was a really mangy coyote, you know, just like, I don't know, he's starving to death or something, had some kind of disease. But he was really concentrating on trying to get to the birds and attacking the cage. Um, so I was able to get pretty close. I got within 10 yards of him sneaking up behind the trees and he finally noticed me. I sat down uh, and was able to get one shot off, a clean shot through the eyeball, um, because this thing is just like that good, uh, how good it shoots, and dropped him in his tracks, no problem whatsoever. So uh, that link's right up there in the top right hand corner. Go ahead and click on that if you wanna watch that video because it was actually caught by chance on the trail cam the shot and everything was caught and you'll see that there and so you know that obviously was a unique circumstance and i wouldn't take this gun coyote hunting but it is capable of doing that uh i've used it to hunt rabbits uh squirrels and you know birds le legal birds that you can hunt with with uh, pellet rifles and stuff and uh, you know it's just uh, been a flawless gun Back when I was younger and I had really good eyesight and a really stable hand, um, there was a certain pear tree that had pears up at the top that I didn't have anything long enough to get to. And I actually could shoot the pear stems off with this thing um, and drop the pears. And one time, <laughs> this is kind of a story, but uh, I was driving along and I saw a pair of brand new Nike tennis shoes hanging from a power line. Um, and. Uh, I was like, man, those things look like brand new Nike Airs. And so I uh, wanted those those tennis shoes. So I went and got my pellet gun, my, my, my 36 here, and drove back and uh, um, just stopped, pointed the gun out the window, and shot the shoestring in half, dropped those shoes down. They happened to be my perfect size. And boy, they were a great brand new pair of Nikes. I uh, sanitized them, but, uh, you know, wore those things for a long time. And I didn't learn until later that uh, sometimes when tennis shoes are hanging off a power line, um, that uh, uh, sometimes that's to indicate where there's a drug dealer house is uh, so that people know. And so there was some drug dealer out there that lost his pair of uh, Nikes maybe. Uh, so that's kind of funny to think about. 
But anyways, I'm telling you what, this gun has seen some duty, so I'm just gonna shoot some, uh, do some target shooting here and let you see how it performs. All right, so I'm ready to do a little target practice here for you and just show you how accurate this little gun is. And you notice that I have it sitting on a pillow, uh, a, a couch cushion. Now you're like, why in the world is he doing that? That can't possibly be a good way to uh, shoot a rifle. Well, for most rifles, it wouldn't be. But when you're dealing with a brake barrel or a Springer air rifle, you have to understand that these guns cannot be held stable. If you try, the harder you try to hold this thing and lock it down, the worse the accuracy is going to get. Because when you cock a brake barrel, you compress a spring down in this chamber, the compression chamber right here, okay? And it's got a plunger on it. So when you pull the trigger and release that plunger, it goes forward pushing the gun backwards, okay? So the recoil goes backwards. When it hits the end of the chamber, the stop, it goes forward. So you have a dual recoil on a Springer air rifle. You have a backwards recoil and a forwards recoil. The backwards recoil is a soft recoil. The forwards recoil is a hard, a shock recoil, okay? And that's why a lot of scopes don't last on Springer air rifles because most scopes are not designed for that sharp forward recoil, that shock. And so this pellet gun just is a scope destroyer. And you would think that it, because it's not a magnum or anything that it wouldn't, but it has broken every scope that I've ever put on it, which is why it doesn't have a scope on it now. Now I will be doing a future video about a shock absorbing scope mount that I'm gonna be testing out on this. Um, I don't have the scope in, but I'll be ordering a UTG true tested, true strength scope to tr test that out. So I'll be putting on a shock absorbing mount and a UTG true strength scope. And I'm gonna see if I can get a scope on this thing that it will not break. But I've spent hundreds of dollars on scopes that this, this baby breaks every one of them. So um, it's great with iron sights, just super great. But I'm getting pretty old guys and my eyesight just ain't that great. So um, I do need that scope. But anyways, what we're, the reason the pillow is here is it, it allows that free motion of the gun. And you probably will not get more accuracy out of an air rifle than using a pillow as a rest for it and not trying to hold it down. If you just kind of hold it generally side in and use your breathing techniques and your trigger techniques and just shoot and let this gun have its way, let it do this, let it do the backwards or forwards, you'll get more accuracy out of it than if you just try to screw it down and bolt it down hard. You're just, it's not gonna shoot well that way. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna throw the target up on screen here. All right, guys, so I'm set up to shoot here. Unfortunately, the wind has picked up and uh, got a little bit of a crosswind, so hopefully we're gonna do good. So you can see I have a target down range there. I'll throw it up on there. Now that is a National Rifle Association BB target. It's intended to be shot at five yards, okay? Five meters, I guess. And uh, But actually, using my Woo Sports range finder here, I'm gonna range us at 14.5 yards. So using it at almost three times the distance that target's intended to be used for. I've taped a dime to the side of the box down there. You can see it to show you just how small this target is. Um, using open sights, got a little bit of a crosswind and I'm not young no more. So my eyesight's not as good as it used to be. But let me go ahead and see if I can hit that tiny little bullseye with this 33 year old air rifle okay using the jbs exact pellet here the wind is giving me a little bit of reprieve here so hopefully i can get one before it picks up little bit off to the left there. Let me try again.
there you have it guys five shots in less than a dime space rws model 36 after 33 years still shooting at almost original factory specs for it with nothing ever done to it no parts replaced still dead on accurate um tiny little deal all those pellets could fit on the tip of my my finger right there okay they could fit on less than my thumbnail and uh, that's a good rifle so if you get a chance to get you an rws model 36 don't don't hesitate to pull the trigger guys because it is worth every penny that you're going to pay for it um and uh don't even try to offer to buy this gun because there's no amount of money you could offer to uh, buy this from me this thing's gone through a lot of different things well i hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful if you have please like subscribe and comment uh, remember to share my videos with other people that you think might enjoy them i appreciate that very much until next time this is the jungle explorer signing out